Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to take a brief digression from my series on combinatorics to explore the Fibonacci sequence and its relation to the golden ratio. Recall the Fibonacci sequence is given by 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on where each of these terms is the sum of the two before it. If we take the ratio between consecutive terms, we get 1 over 1, which is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 1.5, 1.6 repeating, 1.6, 1.625, and so on. As we go further in the sequence, that ratio bounces back and forth a bit, but it seems to settle around 1.618-ish, a number known as the golden ratio, phi. The exact value, it turns out, is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Today, we're going to look at three different ways to see where that comes from. Our first approach uses a tool known as a continued fraction. To motivate it, let's see if there's a nice way to get from one of these ratios to the next. Let's start with, for example, 13 over 8. How can we get from there to our next ratio, 21 over 13? Well, I see a 13 in the numerator, and I want it in the denominator, so let's start by taking the reciprocal, which gives us 8 over 13. And then to get from there to 21 over 13, we need to add 13 over 13, which is just 1. Okay, let's try that a little bit more generally. Let's start with fn plus 1 over fn. Once again, we'll take a reciprocal to get fn over fn plus 1, and then we'll add 1 in the form of fn plus 1 over fn plus 1. And combining, we get fn plus fn plus 1, which by the Fibonacci relation is fn plus 2, over fn plus 1, which is the next ratio in our sequence. So what this means is that we can take one of these ratios, take the reciprocal, and add 1 to get the next. Let's try that out, starting with our first ratio, 1 over 1, which is just 1. So we take the reciprocal and add 1, which gives us 2 over 1. Then we take our reciprocal and add 1, which gives 3 over 2. Then we take the reciprocal add 1, which gives us 5 over 3, then take the reciprocal, add 1, which gives us 8 over 5, and so on and so forth. And if we keep going out, this pile of fractions gets bigger and bigger, and the longer we go, the more it looks like an infinite fraction, called a continued fraction, which looks something like this. So what is this continued fraction equal to? Well, let's give it a name, x. And notice that there's another copy of x sitting right here in the denominator. So this is really equal to 1 plus 1 over x. Multiplying through by x and rearranging, we get x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Solving, we get x equals 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, or 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And we want the positive solution here. And as we said a moment ago, that's just phi. So what this means is that the limit of this continued fraction here, which is the limit of the ratio of Fibonacci numbers is equal to phi. 
We're also going to see this negative root again in a moment, so I'm just going to give it a name, phi bar. And now for something completely different. This time, let's use the tools of linear algebra, in particular, vector spaces. The Fibonacci sequence is defined by the fact that any term is the sum of the two before it. But it's also defined by the first two terms. And there's no reason we had to start with 1 and 1. We could equally well have started with, say, 2 and 1, which gives us this sequence here, known as the Luca numbers. Or we could have started with, I don't know, negative 22 and 1 seventh, or 0 and 0. Really doesn't matter. Any two numbers will do. So let's say we have two of these Fibonacci-like sequences, one of them given by a0, a1, a2, and so on, and the other given by b0, b1, b2, and so on. And if we add these together, term by term, what we get is a0 plus b0, a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, and so on. And notice that if we add a0 and a1, we get a2, and if we add b0 and b1, we get b2. So if we add this and this, we get this which means the sum is also a Fibonacci-like sequence. And further, if we take one of these sequences and multiply all of the terms by the same number, then we get another Fibonacci-like sequence. Now, those of you who know your linear algebra probably recognize this as a vector space. And because it's defined by only the first two numbers, that means it's a vector space of dimension two. So what that means is that any Fibonacci-like sequence can be written as the scaled sum of any two sequences we choose, so long as one is not a multiple of the other. So which sequences should we choose? Well, we're looking for a ratio, so it makes sense to look for sequences that have a common ratio. That is, sequences of the form 1, x, x squared, x cubed, and so on. Are any of these sequences Fibonacci-like? Well, if they are, they must satisfy x squared is the sum of the terms before it, so x squared is x plus 1. And as we saw a moment ago, that means that x must be phi or phi bar. Well, hey, that's two values, so we get our two sequences. 1, phi, phi squared, and so on, and 1, phi bar, phi bar squared, and so on. So the Fibonacci sequence is a scaled sum of this sequence and this sequence. That is a times this sequence plus b times this sequence gives us the Fibonacci numbers. So, plugging in values and doing a whole lot of algebra, we end up with a equals phi over the square root of 5, and b equals negative phi bar over the square root of 5. So, putting everything together into a formula, we get fn equals phi to the n plus 1, minus phi bar to the n plus 1, all over the square root of 5, a result known as Binet's formula. And this is really nice because it lets us just jump to any Fibonacci number without having to compute any of the numbers before it. But it's also really nice because it lets us approximate it without having to do too much work. So phi bar is between negative 1 and 0. So if we raise it to a very large power, this basically cancels out. And so we're left with 
fn plus 1 over fn is approximately phi to the n plus 2 over root 5 over phi to the n plus 1 over root 5, which is just phi. So that tells us, once again, the ratio between Fibonacci numbers approaches phi. The last approach I'd like to discuss uses one of the most powerful tools in combinatorics, generating functions. We'll take our Fibonacci sequence and turn it into a function so we can use the tools of functional analysis to learn more about it. First, let's define our function f of x to be the sum of Fibonacci numbers times appropriate powers of x. That is, it's 1x to the 0 plus 1x to the first plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed plus 5x to the fourth, and so on where each of the coefficients in this power series is the corresponding Fibonacci number. And we can write that a little more compactly as the sum from n greater than or equal to 0 of fn x to the n. So how does this help? Let's take another look at our Fibonacci relation. fn equals fn minus 1 plus f n minus 2. Well, if this is true, then it's also true if we multiply through by x to the n. And if it holds for each n, then it also holds if we add together over all n. And we're going to need to start at n equals 2 so as to avoid getting any negative indices for our Fibonacci numbers. Well, that first term there looks pretty familiar. That's just this, but starting from 2 instead of 0. So that means that it's going to be f of x minus these first two terms here, minus 1, minus x. And the second term is also pretty familiar. To see it, let's expand out to get 1x squared plus 2x cubed plus 3 3 x to the fourth plus 5 x to the fifth, and so on. And that's pretty much just f, but with this first term removed and multiplied by x. So it's x times f of x minus 1. And by the same logic, this last term here is going to be x squared times f of x. Solving, we get f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x minus x squared. That's a pretty simple expression for f of x, but it's not the most useful form. Instead, we'll want to break it into two fractions using a tool you may know from calculus called partial fraction decomposition. It turns out we can split this into phi over root 5 times 1 over 1 minus phi x minus phi bar over root 5 times 1 over 1 minus phi bar x. And if you've played with power series before, you may recognize these as the sums of two geometric series. So we can rewrite this as phi over root 5 times 1 plus phi x plus phi squared x squared, and so on, minus phi bar over root 5 times 1 plus phi bar x plus phi bar squared x squared, and so on. And if we combine like terms, we get phi minus 
phi bar over root 5 plus phi squared minus phi bar squared over root 5 x plus phi cubed minus phi bar cubed over root 5 x squared and so on. But we already have an expression for the power series of f. It's just this. So the coefficients of this power series and the coefficients of this one must be equal. And if we set them equal, we get fn, which is the coefficient here, is going to be equal to the coefficient here, which is phi to the n plus 1 minus phi bar to the n plus 1 over root 5. And once again, that's Binet's formula. By the same logic as last time, we get that the ratio of Fibonacci numbers, fn plus 1 over fn, approaches phi. I know I went through these techniques pretty quickly, and I skipped over a lot of the details. My goal here was mostly to show you the variety of approaches that you could take, not necessarily to dive into any one. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. But there are also a lot of other very clever people on YouTube talking about these sort of things. If you want to know more about continued fractions, Mathologer has done a few really great videos, which I'll link below. If you want to see more linear algebra, 3 blue 1 brown has a full series on it, also below. And if you want to see more generating functions, stick around. I'll explain them in much more detail in the next video, and they'll be a central theme for the rest of the series. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.